Well, here we go again, day two of our tour of the Black Isle. It had been raining all night, but was now dry. What a bonus. It wasn't long before we were back on the NCR1, riding back the way we came in the day before. We then jumped off the NCR1 and onto the A9 just before Dingwall, so we could cross over the Cromarty Bridge and onto the Black Isle. The A9 and the bridge were busy with traffic, but luckily we didn't have far to go. Construction began on the Cromarty Bridge in November 1976. It was completed in April 1979 and at a cost of £4.5 million. It became part of the A9 in 1982. Before the bridge was built, you'd have to cross the Cromarty Firth by ferry. This would have been from Dingwall to Alcaig or in Vergarden to Balblair on the Black Isle. One last ferry across the Cromarty Firth remains and that's the little Nig Ferry. We crossed over the bridge and onto the B9163 and then cycled onto the Black Isle. The road was lovely with very little traffic distresses out. And then it began to drizzle just as we started to climb a big hill. What? The next bit of road was flat but elevated, giving us a nice view of the Cromarty Firth again. A bit further on, we came to Cromarty Bay where we could see all sorts of wildfowl at the water's edge, as well as oil rigs in the distance. It was a tranquil stretch of road and we enjoyed cycling along just looking at the view. In the distance we could see Nig where there was another oil rig and the ship. There's a dry dock there where they repair the oil platforms, although I'm not sure whether these were in for repair or decommissioning. If anyone out there does know, I'd love to hear from you. And then Cromarty came into view. I was looking forward to some coffee and food and showing Craig around this tiny town at the tip of the Black Isle. As we rode in, I couldn't help but notice how many cars were parked up. The last time I came, this was a lovely, quiet little place. On this occasion, I was disappointed to see how busy it was. It soon became clear that we'd turned up at Cromarty's annual rowing regatta, and the place was heaving. Unfortunately, Craig and I don't do crowds, so we made a hasty exit. I had intended to show him the famous Nig Ferry, but there was just too many people milling around. Luckily, I've got loads of video from a previous visit a month earlier. It's the busiest day of the bloody year, aren't they? For centuries, a ferry has operated at this point between Cromarty and Nig. When the Nig oil fabrication yard was established in 1972, it became very important to workers living in Cromarty. Without this link, they'd have to take a 40-mile round trip over the Cromarty Bridge. The little ferry can carry two cars and 12 passengers. It's only a short crossing of just less than a mile. It runs every 30 minutes unless it's busy, when it then becomes a shuttle service. It might not be the critical link it used to be, but it certainly adds to Cromarty's charm, and it's worth the trip just for the novelty alone. If you do want to use it, check its Facebook page to make sure it's running. 
It generally operates from June to September, weather permitting of course. We then decided to have a scout around and look for cafes. Well, you should know by now, there's always time for coffee time. As we rode around, we were stunned by the town's charm and character. That night I researched the town's history and was surprised by the story of Cromarty. It's Sunday though, isn't it? Ah, it's open. The little town is a collection of huddled fishermen's cottages and Georgian merchants' houses. In the 13th century it was a royal borough trading in produce from the sea and the surrounding fertile farmlands. Unbelievably, there's 209 listed buildings in the town and 10 of them are classed as Grade A. It's regarded as the best preserved example of an 18th century town in Scotland. It smells beautiful, do not it? Cromarty is a seaport and has had a sea-based economy for most of its history. By the 17th century it had become a major centre for the export of salt fish. In the 18th and early 19th centuries it was a major port importing hemp from the Baltic to be woven into rope and baskets in a factory by the shore as well as exporting farm produce from the Black Isle. It flourished once again in the 19th century with the herring boom. Around 1830, its population had peaked to over 2,000. There was virtually no new building in the Victorian era, and by 1971 the population had dropped to less than 500. Then came the North Sea oil boom, and during this time, oil rigs were built and maintained by the shipyards at Niggan in Vergarden. The Cromarty Firth is perfect for this sort of activity, as it's sheltered by its small entrance and it's very deep. This also makes it easy to defend, which is why it was used by the military in both world wars. Anyhow, I digress. We did get a lovely coffee and nice food from the amazing Suter Creek Cafe. After our coffee break, we resumed our ride and cycled out of the little town. A little bit further on we turned off the busy A32 and onto the NCR1, which was a lovely quiet minor road. Yeah, that's where the ferry is, isn't it? Right. Between the two headlands. Uh -huh. Right, we're on this minor, so minor route now, Eurovelo route. Yeah, we've come from right over there across the Cromarty Firth. All the way across, back. And now we're going to have to go around the Black Isle. Mm -hmm. 
We'd now changed direction and were heading back along the other side of the Black Isle. This meant that we were now looking over the Moray Firth. We eventually rejoined the AA32 and made our way to Fort Rose, but not before stopping at Rose Markey. Um, well, for another coffee, of course. Now, Rose Markey is a lovely little village overlooking the Murray Firth. It's got a lovely long beach with good walks in either direction. If you look across the water, you'll have a fantastic view of Fort George and Channery Point. Oh yes, and I nearly forgot, Crofters is an amazing cafe stroke restaurant overlooking the beach. If you're visiting Rose Market, I really do recommend that you stop here. The food and cakes are amazing, and uh, the coffee's pretty good too. Yeah, I've been on the coffee. Mr. Craig, the athlete. <laughs> <laughs> We got Channery Point and across from it, Fort George. And best of all, a cafe here, because Craig's dying for another coffee. <laughs> Anyhow, after a short stop, we continued on to Fort Rose and the Anderson Hotel where we were staying the night. Well, despite its eccentric look, the hotel was worth the stay just for its restaurant and breakfast alone. <laughs> 